Blue Protocol is an upcoming anime MMORPG from Japan that's being developed and published by Bandai Namco. This game has a large focus on story with a fully voice acted main quest line with tons of anime cutscenes. Your class is determined by the weapon you choose and you're able to switch and level up each weapon in the game. Content wise the focus seems to be entirely on PvE with 6 player dungeons, world bosses, 20 man raid bosses and PvE wave based arenas and it doesn't seem like like any PvP content is planned for now. Aside from that, the world in this game is instanced, however the zones are very large. You can summon a mount for a certain period of time to boost you across the zones. Progression comes entirely from crafting things yourself, and upon release, this game will be free to play. Before we get into my first impressions though, a quick word from today's sponsor. Atlantica Online is a classic MMORPG with tactical turn-based combat that's set in an alternate high fantasy version of Earth and features a diverse range of races, monsters and mythological elements. In this game, players will recruit heroes and mercenaries to embark on an epic journey to the lost city of Atlantis whilst traversing a game world based on locations modelled after real world geography. Partake in strategic PvP combat, kill bosses for epic loot, Fight your way through more than 20 dungeons and take some time to relax by decorating your own player house. Atlantica Online will soon be free to play on Steam, so if you're a fan of alternate history and strategy in a massively multiplayer environment, then add the game to your Steam wishlist using the link in the description below. I'm excited to finally play what looks like a decent anime MMORPG. Three different age types by the looks of it. This guy looks older, you can be a kid be a teenager, a few different hairstyles, nice strong jawline, two different colours with your eyes if you want to, change your pupils. Okay, this facial hair is pathetic. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I can be a guy with green lipstick if I want to. Dudes can also have makeup as well. Two different clothing options? If this is my choice of clothes, I'll just go naked. Three different voices. <laughs> so now I need to choose a starter weapon. I can go sword and shield, double axes, bow, or mage. In this game you can level multiple different weapons though, you're not locked into just one class. Kanshiro. Trippy intro cutscene. Wow. I didn't think my character would actually be naked. I thought it was just a clothing preview. Don't worry, underwear man will protect you. So control is dodge in this game. Feels quite good, quite smooth. So the mage combat does lock you in animation. And we have a very happy anime girl. <laughs> this is the most anime anime game I've ever played. I'm gonna have to figure out how to put some clothes on. Okay, that's better. Okay, we go again. <laughs> so we're in some kind of inn. Got some nice wholesome music playing. Sit down on the chair if I want to. Interesting animation talking to the NPCs. Asta leads. Okay. The user interface is very clean, except for this big black thing at the bottom. I've got this marker telling me where I need to go. The minimap also gives me direction as well. The movement of the running, jumping, dodging and sprinting all feels really good. Teaching us to buy a potion, I guess. <laughs> this guy made the same mistake as I did. Most of the people playing have Japanese names but there's quite a few non-Japanese players I'm seeing as well. Another player that didn't take the character creator seriously. Guess we unlock this teleporter. In areas where there's lots of players, it definitely feels like the frame rate's well below 60. Out into the big wide world, I guess. Asteria Plane. I'm assuming my quest is to just kill some monsters. I've got a Q ability, what does that do? Fireball. These mage abilities do lock me in place when I'm casting them, but the fact that I can cancel the casting with the dodge roll makes it feel a lot more fluid than it would be if I didn't have that option. Beautiful rainbow light ray coming down from the sky. You can hide the UI by pressing N in this game and wow. It looks really, really good. This is easily the best looking anime MMO I've ever played. So the way my mage combat seems to work is I've got my fireball ability, which is Q, and I've got my mana, which is in the middle of the screen. 
and I can recharge that mana by pressing right click. Nice bit of detail when you run through the bushes, all the leaves pop out. The lighting in this game looks absolutely gorgeous. So we need to go deeper into this dungeon area, I guess. I've got 86 HP and it doesn't seem to auto regenerate. I'm getting lots of quests now. The game seems to be opening up a bit. Take this one, take this one. I'll just take every quest. So if I press enter, to chat it automatically brings up a big emotes list I can sit down if i want to sun's going down i have no idea what this quest is but it's making me talk to a lot of people farmer john's got a quest for me well this building here looks important footprints splash in the water i appreciate that attention to detail longest talk to me quest i've ever done so this one here's a solo dungeon smash the boxes see if there's any secret loot the mage's abilities seem really powerful the thing that lets him down is him needing to recharge his mana. First real boss fight. So we've got telegraphs to avoid. Some stuff to dodge out of the way. Recharge our thing. Dodge. The dodge feels very smooth and fluid. I like the dodge a lot. Dungeon cleared. Lots of XP. Oh, it looks like there's a boss on my mini map. Oh, it's pretty far away. Pleasantly surprised by how big the zones are in this game. Lots of players running to this boss. Level 9. We're all just kind of stun locking it across the map. Bloody hell. We pushed the monster off a cliff. That thing was staggered to oblivion. Class level up. That gave a lot of XP. World bosses seem well worth doing in this game. So I need to kill 20 foxes. But if I look at the map... The map doesn't tell me, like in other MMOs, that I need to kill 20 foxes. I actually need to read the quest. I actually don't like the mage class. Once you run out of mana, it feels very clunky to have to dodge and then hold right click to recharge your mana in the middle of combat. Oh wow, these people have mounts. I'd at least appreciate it if the map displayed which zones the quest were located in. Because you have to go into the menu and you need to read every quest. And you need to pin one quest at a time and it feels... Very unintuitive and very clunky to need to press M, stop moving, then click here, then click here. You have to go through so many clicks just to get the information. I'd probably give the user interface so far a 3 out of 10. Why don't items stack in your bag in this game? What's the purpose of that? Why don't potions stack? That makes absolutely no sense. If you wanted to have 30 potions... That's your entire inventory full. Cannot wrap my head around that design at all. Oh, quick, tag the boss before it dies. Nice. Beautiful. Level up. I want to kill this mob by hitting the barrel. Wait. Just ulti it and it should both get one hit. Nice. Here's the next boss. Some demon pig. Okay. Oh god, I think we almost one hit it. Oh my god, we found the reroll master. This class change thing should have been in the tutorial. Very surprised that it wasn't. So because I've switched classes, I've gone back to level 1. So I'm going to chain run a few dungeons just to get my level back up to where it needs to be. The combat feels way better already. My left click actually feels relevant. The cool thing I like about this sword class is if you dodge away from the enemy and then you left click them, you kind of zoom over to them. It's really nice. Yeah, this feels great. Even with just pretty much one ability, feels very nice. Oh, that's nice. Okay. What does my R ability do? Nice to know I can kill level 9 mobs at level 4. 5k XP, a bunch of money, potions. Halfway to level 6. I should have unlocked an ultimate ability now. Nice. Charge into the explosive, lad. Oh, pop my ulti. Oh, no. It's kind of knocked me off the map. Does that mean I fail the dungeon? No. So the sword and shield definitely doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as the staff. But it's a lot more fun and has a lot more mobility. It's also more tanky as well. I can imagine this game being a real pain in the ass if you've got bad ping. Finally, one of the pros of living in Thailand. I can connect to Japan and Korea for games and get good connection. A connection that's even better than normal thanks to exit lag. Look at that. 89 MS connecting to Tokyo. Beautiful. Okay, he turns, does he? Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Good heal. This boss is tough. 
Okay, we got him. So the next thing I need to work on is crafting a new sword and shield. The starting sword and shield only has a max level of 7 out of 7, I think. The next thing I need to work towards is this. I've got enough coins. Don't have the crafting resources, though. Something I've noticed is that each of these maps have clouds covering various areas of the map. I'm going to see if there's a way that I can uncover the clouds. And I think you do this by collecting these light things. Yes, that's it. Okay, so at least I figured that out. I love how this game looks in the daytime. Very beautiful. Killing these wild bosses is a bit of a clusterfuck. We all just kind of chain stun the bloody things. So if there's any secrets behind the waterfall. There is. Oh god, I've pulled all the dogs. AoE. Nice. Okay, 8 out of 8. We're fully charted this zone. So when you jump on your mount, it loses health. It's got two bars, ENG, energy, and ST for stamina. All right, so the mount just gives you a brief boost across the zone. Another quest done. These things can be leveled up. So this thing here basically gives me stuff that I infuse into myself to give me stats. Basically armor, but not armor. And this thing here gives you an ability based on the type of monster that you craft. Let's craft ourselves a wolf. So this is level 1 out of 15, and then I can take the upgrade stones and stuff that I get from being out and about questing, and I can upgrade it. So these things, you don't upgrade at the crafting station, you upgrade them at the shop by clicking this option, and then I can put stuff into it. Oh my god, it all makes sense now. So I could take this straight to level 20 if I wanted to. Right now I'm just mob grinding for resources to upgrade my gear. I'm pretty sure that's what I need to do. So I'm going to use my mount just to boost back and forth to other creatures. Can I finally craft this new weapon? Yes, I can. It's going to use a lot of my money though. Okay, let's craft it. Great success, nice. So because this one's only level 2 out of 12, it's only 53 item power. Whereas this one, because it's 7 out of 7, it's 77 item power. So even though this is my newest craft, it's only worse because it hasn't been leveled up that much yet. Use less material. Oh, okay. So I can't take this to level 10 because I'm not level 10. Nice, level 10. Can finally upgrade my sword. Great success, nice. Oh, I can upgrade all of these. Nice. I can buy this thing. So now I've got a bunch more slots to equip. So that's given me a lot more stats. Take this one to level 10. Take this to level 10. And now I've got some more powerful abilities. That's an extra 200 damage when I summon this pet to deal some damage. So I am super powerful now. Oh my god, I do so much more damage now I've upgraded my weapons. Can I rank up yet? Wait, can I actually rank up? Finally, man. Every time I've clicked that, it's told me that I wasn't allowed to do it for some reason. I've unlocked the next main quest, and this gives a lot of rewards. This game was a real pain in the ass for the first few hours, but now I'm figuring it out. It's not too bad. A little cutscene of the new zone that I've just entered. I love my quick little fox mount. He's a good boy. Found a new town, Larpal. And this here looks like a new thing I can probably teleport to. Progress is being made. The moonlight in this game is really nice. All right, we need to go in this building now. This dungeon's got a cinematic before we enter. This is the Pillar of Divinity dungeon. Every time I go in one of these dungeons, the game supplies me with five potions each time. And also food by the looks of it. Wow, that's bright. Block. Oh man, I can't get out of that. Okay, I don't want to get caught by that ability again. This is a really cool dungeon. I'm liking this one a lot. It reminds me of something out of Final Fantasy or something. I don't know why I just feel the need to smash all of these boxes. I don't get anything for it. Maybe I should. The anime cutscenes are bloody fantastic. So, this is the next boss we're fighting, I guess. Man, that is how you introduce a boss. Okay, I'm hyped for this one. Let's go. Use this to buff me up. Big damage. Dodge. 
Lots of XP, random chests, lots of money, and more story after the boss is dead. Okay, and in pops what appears to be another bad guy. Oh my god. This is so cool. It's like I'm actually playing an anime. This is a really, really cool game. The cutscenes are fantastic. This guy's gonna die, isn't he? Yep. Nice suicide. She's gonna teleport us away, isn't she? I had a feeling we wouldn't be fighting this guy yet. That's a lot of XP and money. That's gotta be level 12. This is the end of the main quest for now, and now the game's introducing me to end game content, and this seems like world bosses, the 1v1 arena, and raid bosses. I've unlocked a few other dungeons apparently. This one's level 10, this one's level 14. It seems as though 35 might be the max level in this game for now. This here looks like a PvP arena. Let's see if we can go inside. Here it is, arena. Let's go. It's a PvE arena. So this is a wave based thing. I need to survive the waves. Wait for my stamina to come back. Wait for my abilities to come off cooldown. Line them up. Big damage. That's so much damage. Ooh. Oh, this is wave two of five. I haven't killed wave one yet, but okay game. I think the strategy might be block with shield, kite, wait for abilities to come off cooldown, group the mobs up, then ulti. More of a pid and I haven't killed the previous wave. I'm getting overrun. Now mobs are spawning that are buffing up the other mobs. This seems a little bit impossible with my gear. I just don't have the damage or the sustain. There we go, rest in peace. Wait, we can go again? Let's try this dungeon, level 10. I'm assuming this says solo, and I'm assuming this says group. That was a correct assumption, three out of six. So my first group dungeon, level 16 mobs. Okay, we're just skipping the mobs apparently. Let me guess, the efficient thing to do is sprint past the mobs, group them up, and AOE them down. Oh my god, we are power running this dungeon. What is going on on my screen? Ulties are being popped. Damage is being dealt. Look at that on my screen. That is a lot of effects. I'm actually impressed with my computer for handling all of this. I'm just going to play about the UI off for immersion reasons. I'm just going to stand here and get some beautiful footage. All of the effects and everything look fantastic. Like the visuals. Visually stunning game. But it's a bit of a clusterfuck to play in. That was one fast dungeon. So this is how you level up quickly, is it? On to the next dungeon. Wait, I can't do this one. I can do the arena in a group. That's going to be a lot more fun. This is going miles better in a group. Hide the UI, get some more nice footage. Okay, so now I've got the big boss. Oh god! Dodge from that. I'm pretty sure I've killed a dungeon version of this guy before. Very good. Okay, we're all happy and we're all clapping. I've unlocked another arena. This one requires level 18 adventurer score, which I'm really far off from. Oh my god, what have I stumbled upon? Mass group synchronized dancing. I need to get involved. If you start dancing and your character's out of sync with everyone else, he'll eventually sync up auto-sync dancing technology. What a sight to behold. What is this? Oh. So after playing Blue Protocol for about nine hours or so, my thoughts on the game are as follows. Visually, this game has the best anime graphics of any MMORPG I've tried so far. The lighting both in the day and during the nighttime looks beautiful and immersive. For an instanced MMO, the zones are pretty big. There's enough room for hidden treasures, for mounts to feel relevant, and to give you that feeling of exploration as you hunt for the light sparks to uncover the map. Hands down the best anime cutscenes, voice acting, and storytelling quality I've seen in an anime MMO. It feels like you're watching a real anime at times. I liked the crafting system, I didn't see anything related to RNG when it came to the progression, and it was nice knowing that every single level you could use your crafting supplies to become stronger. 
The game has a vast emote and emoji system built into the game for social interaction. The ability to level up all classes on one character is greatly appreciated and adds replayability and additional goals to the game. The direction of this game is to focus entirely on PvE. Even though I like PvP MMOs, I can respect their decision here, as I think for smaller, less ambitious MMOs such as this one, it's better to do a great job catering to one audience than a mediocre job catering to both. So PvE fans, this game is 100% just for you and that's okay. The user interface needs a lot of work. Even though it's fairly customizable, I didn't like the big black bar at the bottom of the screen and I thought the questing UI was particularly awful. You could only pin one quest at a time. It was seemingly random as to if that quest appeared on the world map and there's a lot of unnecessary clicks that take you out of the game world to get the information you need for the quests. The world map was very unhelpful and really feels like the game should have a PoE style map overlay option so you can look at the map whilst running around. In addition, the world map wasn't helpful in the slightest when it came to the questing or even letting you know what zone you need to be in for the quests. I've played a lot of foreign MMOs where I can't understand the language, but most of the time the UI designs make questing fairly intuitive. In Blue Protocol, this isn't the case. The mage class needs a rework in my opinion, casting 3 static abilities then having to hold right click for 3 seconds to get your mana back every time felt completely unfun. Instead they should just add cooldowns to mage abilities and have the right click be some kind of heavy mage attack to rebalance the class. Mage is super OP with the damage, but soul destroyingly clunky and static. Maybe that's what they were aiming for though. Overall, Blue Protocol isn't the most ambitious MMO that will come out over the next few years neither will it be the next big thing. What the game will be though is just a good solid anime PvE MMO that will probably have an amazing story and content updates that expand upon that. It's actually refreshing to see an MMO in development that knows exactly the type of audience it wants to appeal to, that's also not biting off more than it can chew when it comes to the scope of the project. For a game in beta, my complaints with the game was all stuff that's very easily fixed, and I'm fairly certain that Blue Protocol will be a success based on what I've seen so far. I think this will be the kind of MMO where you'll play it for the story, you'll burn through most of the content in a week or two, then return to the game whenever there's a new content update that expands on the story, basically like the next season of an anime. From what I've seen of the progression and this game being a Japanese game and not Korean or Chinese, I expect it won't be pay to win but there will be a heck of a lot of cosmetics considering armour doesn't exist in this game. But that's it for this video guys, I hope I gave you a decent insight into Blue Protocol. As always do let me know your thoughts on this game in the comments below and if you do get access to this game for future beta tests, I highly recommend you using exit lag to connect to Japan as it will improve your ping a lot. Link and code for that in the description below for 20% off as well as a free trial. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you again really soon.